How can the wings of an Airbus 380 produce enough lift to carry more than 500 tons? For some it's like magic. But the secret lies in the numbers. Stay tuned. Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl. I'm an ATA typewriting instructor and captain. And this channel is all about aviation. Some time ago, I made a video about how a wing produces lift. You will find a link in the description below. Today, I will add a little more to the equation. Numbers. This is the formula for lift. Lift is the sum of the lift coefficient multiplied with a half, multiplied with the density of the air, multiplied with the velocity of the airplane squared, and multiply with the wing area. Today I will show with real numbers how the formula works. As examples I will use Cessna 172 and Airbus 380. Despite their different size they both follow the same physical laws and the formula for lift works equally well for both. I will show you. But first let's have a quick look at the factors one by one. Lift is the force opposing the weight of the airplane. In daily life we think of weight and mass as the same thing. For example, if your mass is 60 kilos, we say that your weight is 60 kilos on Earth. But it's only 10 kilos on the Moon. Weight is, per definition, the force of gravity acting on a mass. Therefore, the SI unit for weight is not kilograms but Newton. On Earth's surface, the force of gravity is close to 9.8 meters per second squared. Therefore, an object with a mass of 1 kilogram has a weight of 9.8 Newton. But expect for this video, I will, like everybody else, talk about weight in kilograms. The lift coefficient is a dimensionless number. In normal flight, at cruise, the lift coefficient is positive and normally less than 1. It depends on several factors. The most important factors are the shape of the wing profile and the angle of attack. Engineers will also include viscosity and compressibility in the calculations. The angle of attack is the angle between the airflow and the cord line, which is a straight line between the leading edge and the trailing edge of the wing. A high angle of attack gives a high lift coefficient and vice versa. When an airplane is flying at a high speed, it needs a small lift coefficient. Therefore, the angle of attack is small. When an airplane is flying at a low speed, it needs a high lift coefficient. Therefore, the angle of attack is high. The wing profile is selected to give the best performance of the airplane. Many light airplanes like the Cessna 172 have wing profiles with a distinct curved upper surface. Those wings are good when you want to fly slow but they are not suitable for high-speed flight. The Airbus 380 has wings optimized for cruise at Mach 0.85. The cord is relatively thin and the upper surface is almost flat. But because this cord is 17.67 meters long at the wing root, the wing is pretty thick at the root. In order to fly safely at low speeds at takeoff and landing, the wings are equipped with high lift devices, such as slats at the leading edge and flaps at the trailing edge. They increase the curvature of the wing and can more than double the lift coefficient. The density of the air depends on atmospheric pressure and temperature. A high air pressure gives a high density. A high temperature gives a low density. In a standard atmosphere at sea level, the density of dry air is 1.2 to 5 kg per cubic meter. At 22,000 feet, the density is reduced to half. Since lift increases with the square of the velocity, the velocity is a very important factor for lift. The SI value for velocity is meter per second. However, airspeed indicators show the speed in knots, miles per hour or kilometers per hour. So here are the conversion rates. As a rule of thumb, one meter per second is almost two knots. 
When dealing with velocity, we use true airspeed, TAS, which is the actual speed of the aircraft through the air. The wing area is fixed for most airplanes, unless we are talking about airplanes with variable wing shapes. Therefore, in normal flight, we are left with three variables. The angle of attack, the air density, which depends on the air pressure and temperature, and the velocity of the airplane. And now the airplanes. The Cessna 172 should need any introduction. It's the world's most produced airplane with more than 44,000 units built since 1955. The current version is the 172S, which is powered by Lightcoming engine producing 180 horsepower. In the pilot operating handbook, the POH, we find that the maximum takeoff weight, it should be mass, is 2,550 pounds or 1,157 kilograms, and that the wing area is 174 square feet, or 16.2 square meters. We will use SI units here. Here is the graph for lift coefficient with flaps retracted. The lift coefficient increases linearly with the angle of attack until the angle of attack is 12 degrees. Then the graph starts to flatten out and reaches maximum lift coefficient at 16 degrees angle of attack. Beyond 16 degrees angle of attack, lift coefficient declines because the airflow over the wing separates. In other words, we have a stall. When you're looking at the lift formula, we can easily determine all factors, except the lift coefficient, which appears to be a mystery for many. Therefore, we will rearrange the formula so we can calculate the lift coefficient. For the first calculation, we will fly at slow speed at the maximum weight at 2000 feet on a standard day. The air density is 1.155 kg per cubic meters. According to the pilot operating handbook, the stall speed is 53 knots, calibrated airspeed. This is a true airspeed of 55 knots at 2000 feet. We add 5 knots for safety and will fly at 60 knots true airspeed. That's 30.9 meters per second. We can now insert the numbers into the formula. This gives a lift coefficient of 1.27 and an angle of attack of 10.6 degrees. For the second calculation, we will fly at about 65% power at 10,000 feet. In the pilot operating handbook, we find 64% power at 2,600 RPM. That's close enough. The true airspeed is 170 knots or 60 meters per second. The air density at 10,000 feet is 0.905 kilograms per cubic meters. We insert the numbers into the formula and we get a lift coefficient of 0.43 and an angle of attack of 1.6 degrees. As you can see, the speed of the airplane plays an important role when it comes to lift. Now, how about the Airbus 380? Compared to the Cessna 172, this airplane is huge. And so is the wing. The wing area is a whopping 843 square meters. The maximum takeoff mass is 575,000 kilos. For this calculation, we will let the mass be 500,000 kilos and we will cruise at max 0.85 at 35,000 feet. Up there, the air density is 0.380 kilograms per cubic meters. At max 0.85, the true airspeed is 490 knots, or 252 meters per second. When we put the numbers into the formula, we get a lift coefficient of 0.48. I don't have the number for the angle of attack, but it should be around 2 degrees, which is typical for cruise. And now let's do something really cool. We can calculate the mass of the Cessna by starting with the mass of the Airbus and divide with the differences in lift coefficient, air density, velocity and wing area. Here we go. Lift coefficient, Airbus 0.48, Cessna 172 0.43. When we divide the numbers, we get a factor of 1.12. Air density at 35,000 feet, it's 0 
At 10,000 feet, it's 0 0.905. The factor is 0 0.42. Velocity squared, Airbus. Velocity 252 meters per second. The squared value is 63,504. Cessna, 60 meters per second. The squared value is 3,600. The factor is 17.6. Wing area, Airbus 843. Cessna 16.2. The factor is 52. Now let's take 500,000 kilograms and divide by 1.12 and divide by 0 0.42 and divide by 17.6 and divide by 52. And the result is 1,161 kilograms. The difference is only 4 kilo. If we had used an infinity number of decimals, the result will have been exactly 1,157 kilos. That's all for this time. Next time somebody asks you how a big airplane like the Airbus 380 can stay up in the air, you know the answer. I really hope you liked this video. Please support the channel by clicking like, subscribe and share with your friends. And please leave comments below. Thank you for watching and happy learning!